Welcome to the Bob Allen's HealthCast, episode number 362. You better get healthy because illness costs too much. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. In our HealthCast this week, we want to talk about insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies and the ways that decisions get made, at least as far as we can determine how decisions are made, that impact the consumer. And there, I'm, I'm going to share some information about my own family that caused us to start to investigate this topic and have concerns about it. My son is 22 years old, has been on my family's insurance since he was born. And he has been taking an ADD medicine almost all of his life, probably since he was six years old. And it's a medical necessity. Multiple doctors have looked at him and diagnosed it and agreed with the diagnosis and said, you need this medicine. So he has been on a, an ADD medicine called Focalin. On our insurance, the copay that we had to pay for his Focalin prescription every week, well, every month was $50. He recently graduated from college and got a full-time grown-up job that had insurance coverage. So he went off of our insurance onto his insurance for the first time, which saved us some money. Uh, we were all very excited about that. <laughs> so this month, when it was time to get his focal and prescription renewed, he took it to the pharmacy and said, I have a new insurance company. They said, oh, really? Let us have your insurance card. So they took his insurance card, made a copy of it took the prescription. They called the insurance company and said, we have this prescription. The insurance company said, the copay, what, what, the, what the patient will be charged for this, uh, this month is $500. It went from $50 to $500 in one month, just because he changed insurance companies. And I think the drugs, all, all of that type of drug mm -hmm. cost from the pharmaceutical companies went up by a multiple. Well, that's what we don't know. We So we started calling his physician to say, help, help, help. Uh, what do we do? do? Do we have to have this medicine? Can he age out of this? Can can Is there something else that he could go on? Uh, and, and what would those other things cost? Well, you don't know what your insurance company will charge you for a drug unless you call the insurance company, go online, look in their what's called a Even formulary. if you look in their form, formulary, yep. you don't know what you're going to have to pay. Because, because they I've, won't tell you they just unless say, you have a prescription call in hand. <laughs> they say, call us with your prescription. We don't just generically give you the information. So we can't you, make choices. If he was going to consider to give going from Focalin to Adderall, mm -hmm. he can't go on their formulary and find out what they would charge him for Adderall. Unless he has a prescription, prescription from his it. physician for Adderall, then he can submit the prescription, and then they will tell him, oh, that will cost you X. So you cannot comparison shop. Right. And so, so you're out of control, and so are the doctors. The doctors so don't know what these cost. What his physician said was, you are on the extended release version of Folkland. Not the, uh, it, it's not a generic, but you could take the generic. And I marked it on your prescription. So go back to your, your pharmacy and say, give me the generic. So we called the pharmacy and said, how about the generic? They said, well, we don't normally stock the generic because nobody ever gets it. They always get the brand name, but we'll order it. And it'll cost you $250. So my son had to pay $250 as the copay for his Focalin prescription. That's insane. This month. So we are continuing to do research to find out, is there another similar medicine for his condition that would work for him mm -hmm. that would cost less than that? And our conversation today is not focused on my son or my personal condition. It is focused on what do patients do when they get caught in this runaround between in insurance companies. It's not the pharmacy. I mean, the pharmacy can't really help you very much. They have to charge what the insurance company charges, uh, tells them to charge. 
the pharmaceutical company that makes the drug and the insurance companies are in bed with each other to make the most money that they can make. And they're not really concerned about the impact on the ordinary citizen of the cost of these drugs. Their basic response is, hey, you can't afford it. Don't take the medicine. You know, I have a different take on the relationship. All right. I'd like to hear it. Different take on the relationship would be that the pharmaceutical companies can charge in this past two-year period for some reason, mm-hmm. maybe ACA, maybe whatever, they have multiplied the cost. I mean, the cost of all medications have gone up, even generics. So they can increase it. No matter, Nobody's watching them. And the insurance companies don't negotiate necessarily with them, obviously, because they wouldn't have to pay this much or charge the patient that much if they were negotiating well with the pharmaceutical companies. The pharmaceutical companies say, take it or leave it. And if doctors write it, the the insurance companies have to then adjust what you pay to -hmm. cover their loss. Okay. So they have to, so they don't lose. Right. But they're not in right. bed with the pharmaceutical companies. They're just, it's one of their costs. Okay, my cost for that drug, and I have 100 people on it, is going to be that. So we're going to adjust up the copay. So they then put it in a different tier. And that and most of these tiers aren't even a tier. For, for ADD drugs, if you look, it says, it always, if you look at your insurance company and you look at your drug or a drug, I can do it from a different standpoint. But if you look at the drug, it'll say, no tier for this. You have to call us to get what you're going to have to pay for because it's so high, insurance it doesn't contracts, fit a tier. Insurance contracts will tell you what your copay is going to be for tier one, tier two, and two, tier three drugs. So you know in advance, if I get a prescription for an opioid mm-hmm. uh, and it's a class one drug, I know that my copay for any class one drug is going to be 50, 100, 150, whatever it's going to be. And I mm-hmm. know that. The contract that my company has with my insurance tells me. But every year that changes. And it does. It changes every year. And so there's a whole whole bunch of people in an insurance company determining how much you're going to have to pay for a drug. Now, the drug companies have a free-for-all. Well, and I don't understand how they can even make money if these are so expensive that nobody will pay for them. But that's a whole different subject. That's a different ethical I mean, and financial issue. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Issue. Somehow yeah. that somebody must be paying this. Well, when I first met you, before I met you 10, 12 years ago, I had a physician that put me on an ACE inhibitor. Mm-hmm. And I don't even remember now the name of whichever one it was. But she put me on this drug as a blood pressure medicine, cholesterol medicine. And so I I was taking it and the insurance company contacted me. I'd I'd been taking it for several months and they contacted me and said, you can't have this drug anymore. You have to take this drug. And they changed a different one. And I said, what is this all about? Why is this? Well, we don't have that drug in our formulary anymore. So I said, have you spoken to my doctor? Well, no, not yet. We're just talking to you. You can't have this particular brand of this So they're practicing medicine. From us anymore. That's what the doctor said. The doctor went into a furious yeah. response. They're practicing said, medicine they're without practicing a license. Medicine. Now they're telling me what drug to prescribe for you. And they do that all the time. Based on what insurance company your business has a contract with to provide you for You have no care. control. You have no control. There's nothing that you can do. And I said, well, what... I'm responding well to this particular drug. Why can't I continue to take it? And she said, you could. Legally, there's no reason for you not to take it, but your insurance company won't sell it to you because they don't stock it. So we have to find something that they stock, or you have to change insurance companies and shop around. But you can't always do that. you can't always do that. If you have... have your insurance through, through your employer, you can't shop around. And, and once you decide makes that decision. you're in trouble exactly. and you don't know what your drugs are going to cost. So it's a free for all. Yes. And then most people go without their drugs. So, so we had done some research to find out there is a, there's an app that your doctor can get on her cell phone or computer that is called Epocrates, E P O. Uh, it's, it's only sold hypocrisy. to physicians. It's expensive. Yes. And, but it has every, it's like a PDR. It has every piece of information about every drug and the cost. Right. I couldn't get that app. No. I'll, I have Mm-mm. to be a physician to get it. I have to pay to get it on my phone. And what it does is tell physicians what the cash price of a of drug, a drug would is. be. So mm-hmm. if I wanted a one month supply 
a, a 30 day dose of Focalin, it would cost $800 I'm cash not. money on the table. And there's no discount for having an insurance company that absorbs part of the cost for you. It's a flat cash-based cost. So looking at this, the cash price for Folkland would be $800. Mm -hmm. My insurance company was going to charge me $500. Mm -hmm. So they would have paid the $300 mm -hmm. difference. When I went to the generic, they were going to charge me $250. Right. So, they so the, pick up that has to be a lot less. The generic of that. has to be less. Right. And it is. It is. But they didn't give me a generic cost so when I are, went on Hippocrates. There are some other uh, ADD medicines that he can consider, that his doctor and he are in the process of discussing. Mm -hmm. Should you take this? What would the side mm -hmm. effects of this be? What concerns would we have if you went off of Focalin and went on to one of these mm -hmm. other drugs? So they have to they have to throw a dart at the dartboard and say, well, we'll try this one. Just, just try this one. See and they all works. act a little different. I mean, they, they are, are all different. different. The reason... Your son's on Focalin is right. because it is the least likely to cause anorexia or the least likely to keep you from being hungry. These medicines inhibit his appetite. And they make you really skinny and you never you never feel hungry when you're on them, right. I guess. Right. And so um, so that's why he's on Focalin because he can still eat and he's really thin. Right. He doesn't need to be as thin as he is. So he needs to have an appetite, unlike most of us. So that's, that's the reason he needs that medication. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he'll never eat. So... Another drug called Metadate costs, and this is the cash price, cash price based per month. Per month, that he has to pay out of pocket uh, to buy. If he just went to, if he didn't use his insurance at all, if he went to the drugstore and said, "I have a prescription. I don't want to use insurance. I just want to pay cash." But if and your you insurance denies it, sometimes they right. say you don't have enough backup for your ADHD or ADD, and your doctor says, "Well, I gave them everything I've got. It's a, it's a ruse. Right. It's it's a lie." Right. Well, they're but practicing medicine. They're, they're just they're practicing medicine again. So basically, they're just trying to decrease their their cost. Right. So they just say you don't need that, and so then you have to go pay cash if you want it. Right. So you can still get it just right. because the insurance company said no. But but then you have to like use your retirement fund to get your own medicine. Right. So most people need this to go to work if they have ADD or ADHD. So the when I looked at this. The, one of the cheaper drugs for this was called Vyvanse. Vyvanse is not as, um, it is really good for ADD or ADHD, but it causes a lot of tachycardia or fast heart rate. Mm -hmm. So if you have a tendency to have that, you can't take Vyvanse. And so there's also Stratera, which has a completely different um, phar pharmacologic uh, effect. It's three ninety eight a month. Vyvanse is three ninety eight to five seventy one. To five seventy one depends on somewhere between that, that price, depending on what the, your pharmacy can get and your dose. For. Yeah, and the dose that you're on. So now this is the weirdest thing. Dexedrine. Dexedrine's been around since I was a kid. All the moms were on it for weight loss. Mm -hmm. So Dexedrine extended release is six hundred and eighty eight dollars a month to thirteen ninety nine. It's it's a That's the a cheapest drug. Price. Yeah. That's the cash price. That's the cheapest drug I've ever heard of to make. It's a penny a pill. Yeah. And that's what they're charging. They're charging 688 cost them a penny. 688 to 1399. I mean, most people, I mean, it's crazy. That just makes me angry. So so here's this young man who just graduated from college and got a, a good job. I mean, he, a really good job really with good, good job. benefits. He's, a, he's an engineer. He's and they all say, I have great, great insurance, but right. doesn't cover his beds. <clears throat> right. So, but he's looking at, all of a sudden paying three to five hundred dollars a month for a medicine that he of course he's never paid for it before anyway. We've always right, paid to right. pay. But that's still a lot that's a ton of money for anybody. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money out of your paycheck. Right. So so when when this crosses into my practice, besides the ADD thing, right. when this crosses to my practice, the testosterone that you testosterone that right. we use when we're treating men, the average cost per month for treating a man, so if we if pretend we were going to a pharmacy and had to pay this every month, so the cost per man per man per month would be two hundred and fifteen bucks. That's the average That's an cost. average amount of testosterone. If you got two insertions a year and you had the the, the dose, that dose most the average dose is eighteen hundred milligrams, ten milligrams a day. If that's what you were get, if that's what you were getting, that's what you would have to pay per month. After all this talk about eighty two fifteen to your office through your office, yeah, through my office. Okay. Now, 
what's happened in the last year or two is that all the other testosterone preparations, I guess they had Creams, to pay gels, patches, shots. shots, all the other preparations, except for depot testosterone, which is a shot you get in the doctor's office, okay. except for those now cost between $600 and $800 a month. Now, well, three times let that sink are. in. Okay, so everybody goes, oh, pellets are too expensive. Pellets are too expensive. Well, partially because you come in twice a year and you pay twice, mm -hmm. so it's all at once. But sadly, they could be paying $800, and most insurance doesn't pay for testosterone. Right. So even if your insurance picked up $200 of it mm -hmm. for that kind of cost, that's all they would pick up, you'd still be paying $400 to $600 a month. So we are now looking very cheap which yeah. we've never looked like before now that's not a good thing i don't i don't like that you're looking inexpensive right inexpensive not cheap Bargain. Yeah. yes but yeah. but we also do a lot of other things for that you're not yeah. just getting testosterone for that you're getting um preventive care for diabetes preventive care for ed you're also i mean we're writing other prescriptions but also caring for you in other ways that you're getting much more than just testosterone right. however this astounded yeah. me mm -hmm. because, and if you want to know detail, I mean, you may not know what your insurance company is paying, but you, and you just go in and give them your card and you just pick up and you don't even look at your receipt. You should. The Testem gel is $608 a month. Andrew gel is 526 to 627 a month. Axiron gel is $760 a month. Striant buckle tablets are $644 a month. And Fortessa is five seventy a month. Those are all the transdermal testosterones, which in general don't really work that well because they make a lot of estrogen. You get a beer belly and man boobs. So, so these are the cash based prices, right? Cash prices. But if you knock off, I mean, most insurance companies won't ever pay more than two hundred to three hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. on anything. So, and I don't blame them. I mean, that's just too much. Yeah. So if you if you look at that this and say. Well, they may pay $200 a month. It's still outrageous and it's still a lot more than the cash price at my office. And they don't, they don't in general, they, they started not to pay for the pellets for men too. They just don't pay for anything if they can, can help it. It's expensive to get sick, even out of pocket, even if you have insurance. They've figured out a way to still make a ton of money, build tons of buildings, pay their CEOs millions and billions of dollars they shouldn't be traded on the stock market. Stock market. I mean, it, they're trading with your health. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's my thought. But that would be. That's outrageous to say, but it's true. They're still making tons of money, even though the average person can't afford their medical care or their medicines. But let's go to something that's that is a diabetic drug. Okay. Because diabetes is 50% of the population. Focalin and testosterone, Adderall, uh, ADD medicines and testosterone medicines are generally considered to be volitional. They're not, you're not going to die if you don't get them. The you won't quality die, of your life may change but you may have be on five other drugs and you may be, you more, and you may right? not be able to work. But if you are diabetic, you will die if you don't get the medicine. Yeah. And there are other conditions that you can have, which you generally are thought to, to be in life danger if you don't take. We're looking at common drugs. I mean, not yeah. drugs that are that are cancer drugs. God forbid. I don't know Which what those. I didn't even look at those. Of, tens of thousands of dollars a month. Right. And insurance doesn't always pay for that anymore right. either. So so in diabetic drugs, there, there are semi-new, maybe 10 years old, injectable drugs mm -hmm. that both help you lose weight, which decreases your di your diabetic uh, disease and helps you metabolize the food that you eat just like you would with any other diabetic drug like metformin. But you have to start on metformin first and you have to fail metformin, meaning it doesn't bring your blood sugar down and your hemoglobin A1C and you can't, or you can't tolerate it like you have diarrhea all the time or you have nausea and vomiting all the time from the metformin. So Metformin's first, we try that. But then in some people, the metformin pill comes out the way it went in. They don't even dissolve it. Mm -hmm. So they can't take that and the short acting ones for them aren't what they need. They need it 24 seven, they need long acting. So we go to injectables. Okay. So the injectables 
Um, Bietta, Victoza, and Trulicity are three bi um, injectables that do the job of metformin and more and help people lose weight faster than metformin and continue to have people lose weight because they decrease your appetite and they cause you to be full. So these are really good drugs to actually make some progress on diabetes. And you use these before you move to insulin. Right. Once you've gone to right. Once you've insulin, gone to insulin, you, you usually use don't these. use these. Okay. Yeah. So we're stop. We're trying to stop the progression of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at these, I've tried to pre-cert these for some of my patients who have diabetes, who have been, who have failed metformin, who really need this and really need to lose weight so that they don't end up on insulin. And so, can you explain what pre-cert means? Pre-certification pre is something that is generally done by a doctor's office or a doctor, him or herself. A doctor's office has to take time out. It takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes of their time, which is unpaid for. And you call the insurance company. We call the insurance company. We wait on hold. We fill out forms. And then we have to wait until they get a pre the, the re results back. So you explain your medical reasoning as a physician, why you think I need this particular right. drug. And so on this Blue Cross and Blue Shield patient. you're talking to whom? You're talking to a secretary? A secretary or somebody that isn't medical. Somebody that's sitting in front of a computer. Yeah. And saying no, no, no. Yeah. So they're taught to it's say no. to say no. Right. Yeah. So some of the insurance companies, Blue Cross Blue Shield is the one of the ones that I was, I don't usually pre-cert things, but this patient really needed it. And her doctor wasn't going to order it for her. Mm. So I was, I, I put in my pre-cert information. I filled out all the forms. I, this is with Blue Cross Blue Shield. So I don't have a contract with them. They don't know who I am really, except right. for my medical number. And I, I did all this work and I sent it in. She went home with her prescription and she's called my office every week and said, I don't ha I've I not gotten that. any information. Did right. you really do it? Yes, I did. I'm waiting for an answer. Four weeks now. No answer. And no answer. No answer so either way. No answer either way. Not no, not yes. What do people do when they need their drug? Right. They're just sitting there. So this drug, the one I wrote for her was Victoza. She needed three pens a month, $1,400 for one month. No one. Each can, pen? No. Four, three, All three, three pens. pens. She needed three pens for one month. Okay. $1,400. Wow. Nobody. In, it, nobody would pay that. And nobody can afford that. Right. I mean, I don't care who you are. That's not that in your not. budget. Right. And if you have to do that forever, I mean, you might as well just get diabetes. I mean, that's, you know, this is trying to avoid all the costs that are down the line right. for diabetes. We work with diet. We work with exercise. But this is something I just, I can't believe. Now, there's an option. There's another drug that we could use. But it doesn't work exactly the same way, and people don't usually lose weight. Mm -hmm. uh, Trulicity is that is that drug, and that is six fifty eight to seven thirty a month. Now, if they called, if they finally sent something back to me, I would and said, "We'll pay for Trulicity." I try it, right, and see if it worked for this patient because they'll pay for that. You're saving that patient two thirds off right. the other drug. Right. Even if they had, you know, even if they had to pay for it, right. I might try it, but they can't pay this. Right. And I, I'm not sure I would pay this. Right. So, um, so this is, and there's another drug called Bietta, which is usually used even more often. And it's 1984 per month per patient. So that's so highway that's robbery. Who today's pays today's for this? Conversation <laughs> is to say, what do you do if you're, if your child, or your spouse is diagnosed with diabetes and they tell you, you have to come up with this amount of money to get the, the medicine that your child needs to say you don't have insurance or your kid doesn't have insurance. And even you, if they do. Or even if they do, but it doesn't cover what they're doing. So what can you do? What the decision that you have to face is where am I going to get fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 a month each and every month to pay for this drug that my child needs to stay alive. Most of us don't have those kinds of resources. But most of us do have the ability to contact our congressmen, our legislators, and raise hell. And that's what we think should be done. Mm -hmm. The drug companies are out of control. And there need to be regulatory interventions that, that limit what they can do, what they can charge, and why they get to charge these exorbitant 
uh, fees and raise these prices without any warning, without any hearings, without any uh, evidentiary presentation of why this is a necessary and reasonable cost. So get involved to the extent that you harass your politicians, that you elect people that promise you they will do something about the cost of drugs and insurance in the United States. In the healthcare discussions that need to be had in this country need to be had openly and honestly, and you need to be involved as a citizen. You can Thank go you. to GoodRx, which is available to the public on your phone, get an app for GoodRx, and it will show you where you can get the lowest price of any drug if you're paying right. cash, which should be the lowest price if you've got insurance, and they have coupons. They were pretty consistent with what I gave you from Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. So, especially with the higher cost drugs. Right. So you can see this, you can look for what your drug costs or what drug you were prescribed that you can't get. Um, and then you can use that as information, actual facts to send your congressman and your senator, state and federal, but federal is where this is settled. settled. And um, this that's something that they need data. So we are going to put these lists of costs of these drugs that are good as of August, September, 2017, because they change all the time. And you can look through this and use these as, as your examples, copy, cut and paste. Right. And then send that, if that's a, that's a drug, um, an, a type of drug that somebody in your family is taking, right. then you can use that as an example as well. So, so, so this will be posted on the website next to the video that you were watching. Right, this blog, it'll be a form of a blog, so it'll be written. So that's what they need. I, I, we are not going to be able to afford to be sick in the next 10 years. I mean, I thought it was going to be a lot longer than that, but it's going to be in the next 10 years. And most people can't afford to be sick right now. Please help us. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.